All right, I got the Zoom H6 here in studio to test out for review. Uh, I already own the Zoom H4n, and I wanted to see if this device lived up to some of the things I heard were upgraded. So unfortunately, I do have to return this device, but I think I'll probably be upgrading to it. But let's look at what features it has for video production. So to start off with, the main thing I was looking for as a device was upgraded preamps. The preamps on the Zoom H4n tended to be a little noisy. These preamps, much cleaner. They definitely have been upgraded and you have four XLR connections on the device itself, which means four separate microphones can be plugged into this. Now there's also an additional capsule that goes up top that allows you to plug in two more XLR microphones. Each one of these channels supplies phantom power to whichever mic you want. It doesn't just supply it to all of them at once. You can choose which mics get phantom power, which don't. The connected capsule for the XLR connections, that one doesn't supply phantom power. So just be aware of that if you're buying that. And what's really nice is analog fader dials for each channel. For every microphone you have, it has its own dial. So you don't have to dive into menus to adjust the audio. You can easily just reach here and grab the dial and adjust the audio as you need. Now the only bad side to this on this device is they didn't make these lockable. So if it would have been a push button to lock, that would have been really nice, but they don't. So if you have an audio person walking around, he puts the Zoom H6 in his bag, you got to make sure that don't get bumped out of place. That's a bummer, but still not a deal breaker for me. The XLRs aren't lockable either, but they go in really tight and I'm not afraid of them falling out. It doesn't come with the AC adapter, which is a shame, but it does come with improved battery life. The H4n had two batteries, two AA batteries. This one is now it runs off of four AA batteries. So if you use lithium batteries on top of that, you can get pretty good record times out of this. I've heard up to 20 hours. I'm sure in reality, it's not that much, but the point is that battery life is greatly improved. I haven't tested out for using phantom power, which significantly drains the batteries on each device, but at least you get more batteries into this device than you could with the h 4 n So it's upgraded just by virtue of the fact that there's more. Now the headphone jack is now separated from the line out. Before, if you wanted to take your h 4 n and input it into your camera while you were recording on the device, which is a nice way to back up your audio while getting professionally connected microphones into your DSLR, you had to use the same jack. And I typically I used a splitter to monitor the audio. Now you can monitor the audio specifically out of a headphone jack, and you can send the audio out of the device directly into your camera via the line out that's supplied here, separate from the headphone jack. What's nice about this is if you're using it in a video setup, you can plug in your camera via the line out, and then you can plug in all your microphones to the Zoom H6 and record them to the Zoom H6 while you're recording it to the video file. And then on your Zoom H6, you will have separate audio channels for every mic that's plugged in, which is gonna give you more control over your audio in post-production. The record button is now a single push. On the H4n, it used to be a double push, and that caused some people to miss a recording. Each channel up to six with the included XLR device has an audio meter right here on the front, and they're in color. It's really nice. I thought they might be too small, but even from a few feet away, I can still see what my levels are at, no problem. So I actually really like the color meter. It's gonna be a little hard to see out in direct sunlight, but overall, I do enjoy the meter and having all six channels being able to be seen right here on the device. Also for attaching to your DSLR or a tripod or whatever else you want, it's got a quarter 20 threaded screw right up here and that's metal, so that's really nice. The H4n had that as well, so that's how I connected it to the top of my camera when I'm using it to record double sound for DSLR video. There's also a speaker on the back for playback if you just need to get some reference and make sure you actually capture the audio that you were looking for. There's a speaker included on the back. This has compressors and limiters built in. However, in general, I don't like to use compression built into my audio file because it's going to bake the audio or the compression into the file and then I'm not going to be able to change that in post-production. I can change it, but it already has some compression on it. I'd rather record without compression and then do my own type of compression in post-production, which you can see how I do that in my video about my audio processing uh, workflow for DSLR video. But So I generally leave the compression off, but the limiter is extremely helpful. And so having a limiter lets you make sure that when you're recording, 
if you can't monitor the audio, typically you're not going to have headphones in if you're recording yourself like this. I am for this demonstration, but typically I would not. If I have the limiter on, I never have to worry about the audio peaking and overmodulating and getting ruined. So limiters, I really enjoy those on audio recorders, and this has it for every channel that you bring into your Zoom H6. So the Zoom H6 has a couple different attachments, microphone attachments that you can place onto the unit, which changes the capabilities of this unit. This is actually a really unique feature. Um, it's a modular design. And before you just had the XY pattern microphones, stereo microphones, it comes with those microphones as well as a mid-side capsule. But for the purposes of video production, the attachment that expands the XLR to two more channels is really helpful depending on how many people you have on set and you're recording at any one time. But even beyond that, the other cool one for video is the shotgun attachment, which you can buy separately. So this simply clicks right on to the device and the connection is hardy. I don't feel like this is gonna break off. It feels really good and for the shotgun, it of course has its own gain knob here so you can control the audio. So you could attach this to the top of your camera to give you an even better um, audio microphone for run and gun situations if you're running around on a conference show floor or something, picking up interviews, the shotgun mic might come into handy. You could also boom this mic over yourself and record the way I'm recording just like this. So the shotgun mic could come in handy depending on how you're recording your audio. All right, that's the Zoom H6 for video production. This device to me is um, fantastic. It's an, a little audio studio in the palm of your hand and you really are unlimited when it comes to audio and this device. So you can plug it directly into your DSLR and feed your audio in that way or you can record your sound separately and work with individual tracks. Both ways it's gonna be pretty powerful. And it's well built. It has this plastic frame which is encoded in this rubberized material which makes it really nice. Also, it turns on really fast. Whereas the H4N took forever to load, this turns on fast. Which, when you come up on something you want to record and you need to start pressing record right away, this will help you record faster. Also, the SD card slot has been upgraded to SDXE, which is extra capacity. So you can put higher capacity cards into this device. Although, I've never found that having 64 gigabytes of an SD card is a problem with this. <laughs> so, I'll probably never need 128 gigabytes of audio on this device, but it's there if you need it. All right, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, and I'll see you next time.